Redditors who clean up crime scenes, what's the most bizarre thing you've witnessed? Crime scene cleaner here. My first suicide cleanup was quite an experience. Man shot himself in the head in his garage. I'll never forget needing to use pliers to pull teeth and skull fragments out of the drywall behind where he sat, or that blood and brain managed to make its way more than 50 feet across the garage. Most disturbing though, was his pickup. We chose to take it to our company wash bay to pressure wash it and make sure it was as clean as possible. I cleaned it myself, and was satisfied that I had done well. Inspected for blood and couldn't find anything, so I began driving it back to the owner's garage. On the way back a slight drizzle began and switched on the wiper blades. Imagine my horror as a chunk of brain streaks across my newly cleaned windshield. I pulled over quickly and cleaned it up, but it still makes me sick to think what would have happened if it didn't rain that day? This month's poor wife or daughter would have been met with that sight and been crushed again by the impact of suicide. That 10 years ago and I'll never forget it. Now I triple or quadruple check every job. I don't clean up crime scenes, but I do remove the deceased. I can get into more accurate detail of the deceased but. Here's some general stuff. Hoarders are a lot more common than they really should be, first of all. And it's never a clean hoard. It's piles of junk covered in several types of urine, shit and vomit. Molds I've never seen before, and probably insects that haven't even been discovered yet. I understand when the emergency services don't want to be in that kind of house longer than they have to, but I'll never forget having to ask them to help me because I couldn't distinguishing what was actually the deceased, and what was just a piles of random shit that looked more human than the deceased did. People will warn you bodies will bloat, and touching them the wrong way will make them leak. But the image you're conjuring up doesn't even hold a light to what it can be like. Insects skittering when you delicately lift a 400 pounds deceased onto your cot, because one wrong move and they will start oozing. Oh, and the ones who had pets who were so desperate they had to eat their owner. Staring into the eyes of a big, brown-eyed mutt who is happy to finally receive human contact, and all you can't think about is how the deceased is missing their entire face. Poor things were just hungry, but it's unsettling. My job is to clear landmines. I clean war crimes, you can say, yay, bit of a stretch, I know. Recently a cow had walked into a minefield in our area of operations, and stepped on a small anti-personnel mine. However, this mine was boosted by having been buried on top of a directional fragmentation mine, gamers and soldiers, think, claymore, but but bigger. The cow had literally been split in half, with cow intestines spread all over the area and hanging from trees like Hannibal's Christmas ornaments. Family member did heavy duty cleaning including crime scenes. A guy shot his head off with a shotgun. EMTs were supposed to pick him up, literally, but missed a large chunk of brain behind a couch. That was when said family member decided to find other engagement. I occasionally work on the weekends for a funeral home, it's decent money for what is essentially two hours of call-out work when their normal staff is off. Last year I was called in at around 5 in the morning. A 30-something-year-old guy had killed himself, shot himself, in a pretty small two-bedroom apartment. That wasn't the bizarre part at all since I've seen it before on call-outs. What was bizarre was what was in the apartment. Literally thousands of documents, piled on the floor, on a desk, on shelves, of people's financial information. Credit card statements, bank statements, personal data, etc. Probably 3,000 folders with all this stuff in it. Even where there weren't piles of folders, there were just loose papers, magnetic cards, surveillance cameras, it was just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And of course, some of these documents and folders had blood and brains spattered all over them, didn't matter to me though since the detective on scene had said it was fine to take the body. The police had to clear a path by collecting the papers from the route we would take from the door to the apartment to where he was. A couple of months later, it came out that the guy had over a million dollars in cash and bitcoin. Apparently the state police were on to him. My best friend used to have this job. Most of the bizarre stuff was cleaning up suicides. Found a guy's full intact mustache across the room when he blew his head off with a shotgun. One guy tried to kill himself by shooting his stomach with a small caliber pistol, he didn't die immediately so he wrote tons of whacked out stuff on the walls with his blood, then finished the job. 
was dispatched to a vehicle versus pedestrian call a couple months ago, and when we arrived on scene it was like something out of a movie. Dude was running across a fairly busy four-lane road and was hit by a car traveling about 55 miles per hour, after his head went through the windshield of the first vehicle he then proceeded to be thrown into the opposite lane and was ran over and drug about 20 yards by another vehicle. Once the coroner was on scene with traffic investigations we proceeded to pick up his organs bit by bit. It was a fantastic anatomy lesson. I used to work in forensics picking up decedents as well as assisting the medical examiner in conduction of the autopsy. Not necessarily cleaning up the scene but. I've seen a guy who, during some kind of psychotic break, completely castrated his entire package. He then proceeded to stuff the entire package into his mouth and down his throat. He then slit his own throat. Did all of this with a cheap kitchen knife in his shower. Cuz, exsanguination complicating transverse carotid and jugular severance. Manner, suicide. Usar team up, propane, nat gas explosion. Guy's arm was holding onto a ladder going up a holding tank. No body, no anything, just an arm. I don't clean them for a living but had to clean a few apartments when my uncle managed an apartment complex. We had one tenant OD on heroin. He sat there for roughly three weeks before anyone noticed the smell. They took his body and left it to us to clean up. The dude vomited on the ceiling. There were little dry droplets of vomit all over the ceiling right above where he died and to top it off he basically liquefied and left a puddle of gut juices on the concrete foundation underneath the carpet. I thought that shit was left to a professional team, but I guess it's optional and if you don't want to pay for it, you can scoop the brains and blood up yourself. Okay, not a crime scene cleaner but am a medic. Have a few bizarre ones. Came into a home to find a man who had attempted to commit suicide by putting a pistol under his jaw but failed, had a second thought. He ended up having to crawl five feet away to where he had thrown the pistol after only blowing the left side of his face off to finish the job. The second one did the trick. Just about every surface in his living room had some remnant of the poor guy. He left behind two kids. Another time we had a husband who had caught his wife cheating and had turned on the garbage disposal and forced her arm down it. Massive hemorrhaging, but unfortunately she was DOA. Husband ended up with a self-inflicted shotgun wound. PSA, people really don't understand just how messy a shotgun can make things. Think the Hulk smashing a blood and brain filled pinata. And this one was more weird than anything but here goes, older gentlemen we were called to after police performed a wellness check late 70s. Nice house, nice foreign car in the driveway. Pictures of prayers and crosses all over the house. We had into the bedroom and there he is naked except for what I assume was one of those sexy nun Halloween costumes? Honestly I don't know but he ended up having a heart attack mid-pleasure time while choking himself with a rosary. Definitely one of the weirdest things I ever saw during my time working the box. I've got a ton. I used to do CSI work and was an autopsy tech, so I would both go to the scene, investigate, bring the body back to the morgue, and help with the autopsy. Anyways, this person murdered their spouse, and stuffed the body into a fridge, and buried it in the woods. When you have a body exposed to the elements, you have normal decomposition to look forward to, such as insects, bloating, gases, skin coming off, bones showing, etc. Once you've seen a few, then you know that this kind of decomp, state of body is normal and you know what to expect. There are varying levels of stuff you deal with, but it's all within an expected spectrum of the job. Hope that makes sense. However, in this case, this person was sealed in, so you didn't have any of that. They were essentially stewing in there for almost a year, might have been longer, I don't remember the exact time. I wasn't there on scene when they found the person, only in the morgue, to help with the autopsy. So I prep the room, doctor comes in, and I pull out the body from the fridge and wheel them into where we do the actual autopsy. Opened the bag. And oh dot m y, god. The smell, I'll never, ever forget the smell. I've dealt with bodies in various stages of death and decomposition, but holy shit, this was on 10 other levels. Now the morgue has HVAC, air filters, fresheners, and all that, but they weren't effective at all for the smell. It was so bad I gagged, which I've never done before, and almost threw up in my mask. 
The doctor was struggling too, the doc double-backed and almost looked like they were gonna faint. It was the purest, worst, most concentrated, extremely pungent ammonia smell you could think of. I had never smelled anything like that in my career at that point. If wine ages well and is better with time, this ammonia smell did the exact opposite, and it was somewhere worse than anything you could think of. The smell stuck to us too, on our skin, for about a week no matter how hard I scrubbed. I can still smell it if I think about it. The texture of the body didn't help either, it was so slippery and wet that flecks of the ammonia fluid splashed onto my skin, the long gloves went up to my forearm, not all the way to my scrubs. It was the worst autopsy of my life. It took about three hours because we kept having to take breaks and it was a difficult body to work on due to how fragile it was. It beat out everything else I saw, from the crazy accident fatalities, the interesting suicides, to even the person who had half their face eaten by rats and half their body covered in a sea of maggots and insects.